Welcome back to Working Session Wednesdays. Hopefully this is the third one that you've attended over the Summer to Evolve road trip. But if it's your first time, I'm Amber Ferrari. I'm the host of Working Session Wednesdays, Marketing Communications Manager here at Jobbyte. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. Would love to connect with you and chat on all things automation, which is what's being covered this week. So a couple of housekeeping items before our speakers join us here today. If you have any questions, technical or otherwise, there's a questions panel in the system that this webinar is being presented in. You can drop that down and submit your questions. Either we'll get back to you with the technical help in real time, or if you have a question about the lesson, we will follow up afterwards. Um, in the last 10 minutes, we will have a fun quiz and some chance to win prizes. So that's been really fun to do the last couple of weeks. If you haven't done it yet, I encourage you to try. And if you stick around till the very end, there's even more chances to win prizes. So I hope you will entertain that and also share all of your social insights. Tag us at JobBite and use the hashtag JobBiteS2E. We'd love to hear what you think of today's sessions and everything else that we have going on with the summer to evolve. So without further ado, I would like to welcome today's speakers, Kristen Burwell and Lee Goss. I will let the two of them introduce themselves and get started on our awesome lesson about automation and speeding up the hiring process. Hi, I'm Kristen Burwell, Customer Success Manager here at Jobbyte. And I'm Lee Goss, and I'm also a Customer Success Manager here. Happy to have you with us today. So just to get us started here, a couple of quick travel related questions. So Kristen, if you had to choose plane, train or automobile? Automobile so we can get to those remote locations for our vacations. <laughs> and what about driver's seat or passenger seat? Absolutely the driver's seat. I am a terrible backseat driver. <laughs> and how about you Lee, plane, train or automobile? Okay, so my answer to that is all of the above. Because the way I look at it, if you uh, want to get to a remote location, you need an international flight, you need at least two regional flights along with trains and automobiles <laughs> in order to really get off the beaten path. Nice. Um, so driver seat or passenger seat? Uh, that's going to be passenger seat because I love the daydream and look out the window. <laughs> awesome. All right. So welcome to today's automation road trip. And in the spirit of the Summer to Evolve road trip theme, we're going to be taking you on a product agnostic TA automation road trip. So the purpose of today's presentation is to touch on opportunities for increasing your use of automation in your TA workflow in order to reduce bottlenecks, friction points, roadblocks, speed bumps, what have you. So the starting point for today's tour is going to touch on a recommended best practice, which will serve as a foundation for considering all of the automation opportunities that we'll discuss along the rest of the trip together. And then each of our topics today will be like stopping the car for a brief scenic overlook. We'll pull off to the side of the road, pause to take in the automation view, and then move on to the next stop. So our stops today include recruitment, marketing, and campaigning, chatbots, screening, texting, candidate matching, scheduling, workflow automation, integrations, and onboarding and task management. Perfect. So before we head off on the, on the road together today, I wanna to suggest that you start with the simple best practice, and that is map out your TA process. Create a roadmap for the journey. This doesn't have to start out as a formal business schematic or complicated diagram. It can start out as your process scribbled out on the back of a napkin. Um, it could also start out as a team activity where collectively you and your team mind map the different components of your process. So this is intended to be a totally fun session where you just throw things down on the table and connect the dots. And what's great about mind mapping is that it is a totally non-linear brainstorming activity that can work wonders for uncovering blind spots for you and your team. Later, you can work to formalize it in a more linear fashion so that it follows a logical and linear flow. So you might wanna choose somebody special on your team that loves that sort of thing, but the primary idea here is make it a fun activity. So once we get this kind of sketched out, 
if we look at this from end to end, um, you know, things might begin with pipelining or recruitment marketing. Um, things could start, um, could then progress to, you know, the rec approval process, the rec creation process. Then you need to shortlist applicants that are applying to your jobs. And from there, you want to send things over to your hiring managers for feedback, thumbs up, thumbs down. And then the complicated task of scheduling can enter into the equation. Um, interviewers need to complete evaluations. Money enters the um, transaction when the offer letters start to be created. There's background and drug screening services that could enter into your workflow, onboarding and all of the task management around that. And then you may be sending your new hire into an HRIS system. And the other thing to consider is what other systems are talking to your ATS as you manage your workflow. So why is documenting this so important and so beneficial? Several reasons why. First, it provides everyone with a better perspective. You have a holistic view of the entire process. And with this perspective, it's easier to see how all of the stages in your workflow process relate to one another. It also makes it easier to communicate with your TA team when it comes to brainstorming those improvements you might want to make to that process. Everybody needs something different from your process. By allowing all those team members to provide input on your current workflow, you can come up with great new ideas. Yep. And it streamlines communication with internal stakeholders that might sit outside of TA. So if you think about the different stakeholders, your hiring managers, your department leaders, senior management, they don't necessarily know what your process looks like. They don't have the big picture like you and your team see it. So when you reference a workflow illustration, it provides a holistic view and it provides a better foundation for discussion and collaboration across different functional areas within your organization. It also makes it easier to communicate with those outside vendors that you have um, that you might want to engage with. For example, when you're considering integrations. Yep. And as customer success managers, Kristen and I both appreciate it when our clients can provide us with documentation like this. It makes it so much easier to understand where you are today, where you're going next, and how to provide the best feedback so that you get to your final destination as easily and as quickly as possible. And by the way, the Evolve Framework is a platform agnostic TA maturity self-assessment that you're gonna hear more about during Summer to Evolve. The self-assessment can be coupled with your workflow documentation in a very powerful way, allowing you and your team to understand exactly where you want to focus next to improve that TA efficiency. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna get our stop started with um, the automation road trip with recruitment marketing and campaigning. So in today's candidate market, it's important to build and nurture talent pipelines. By spending time creating campaigns and processes, these outreach tasks can be automated to reach a variety of demographics. We can turn your passive talent into engaged applicants. By segmenting your talent pool into strategic audiences that are key to your business hiring goals, whether that's around skill sets, geography, diversity, experience, and more, you can create scheduled personalized campaigns for your audiences to drive conversions and get real-time insight into campaign performance and candidate engagement. You can further actively engage with um, passive candidates through a talent network. So a talent network consists of potential applicants grouped by audience. For example, event attendees who are interested in your company, but are not maybe finding the right opportunity or maybe just not ready to apply yet. You can continue to nurture this audience via automated targeted text campaigns, job notifications, and other relevant employment branding content to move that audience towards candidate conversion. You can also keep that conversation going post recruiting event, whether that's in person, drive through or these virtual hiring events that we've all experienced this past year, automatically reach back out to that group of potential candidates with next steps, follow up activities or employer perks. With just a few clicks, you can schedule a delayed notification email campaign to gauge their interest and further nurture that relationship. So recruitment marketing fits organizations of all sizes, whether your organization uses an enterprise grade HCM or is maybe just getting started with an ATS, you can seamlessly transition those passive talent into more um, robust applicants. 
And then if you're new to recruitment marketing, we do offer a low cost vendor agnostic recruitment marketing certification program through academy.jobbyte.com. And those courses are eligible for HR um, certification credit as well. So next we'll take a quick pit stop with Lee to text. Awesome. So the power of text, it can't possibly be overstated. In today's world, candidates would rather text than talk. So why is texting so important? Well, today people communicate by text five times more compared to making calls. There's a 98% open rate with text. So no other method of communication can even come close to this. The average time to respond is only 90 seconds. And behind those impressive statistics is the fact that 46% of people making less than $50,000 annually are completely dependent on mobile for internet access. So while texting is the way to connect with this segment of the labor market, it's really the, the way to connect with every segment of the labor market, regardless of annual income. So what about automating your text activity? How do you leverage text across your TA journey with automation? Texting solutions can be configured to handle the apply process on your ATS. Texting one-to-one -one directly from within your ATS streamlines your text communications. You can configure a library of common responses based on recruiter preference to automate text responses on the fly and eliminate unnecessary keystrokes. And texting one-to-many. This augments campaigning in general and pipeline development overall. You can automate the screening process using keywords and short codes. So this could be bot driven and based on the responses to your screening questions, the candidate could be sent a list of suggested jobs to apply to or sent directly to a live recruiter. This approach can increase apply conversion when the applicant journey begins with a screening bot on your career site. And on the topic of bots, look for solutions that allow you to build your own bot. This provides you with the flexibility to configure bots on the fly based on your unique immediate set of business requirements. Also look for bot solutions that use natural language programming. This delivers the ability for the bot to really understand a variety of common but variable responses that an applicant might respond with. When it comes to automating reminders, um, an example of this is sending reminders to a large group of candidates for an upcoming event or you could be scheduling text reminders to go out with automation over a short time just prior to the event or reminding candidates of an upcoming interview or reminding new hires to attend an orientation event on their first day. And you know, finally, the entire history of your team's text conversations can be tracked automatically within the ATS when it's integrated so everyone on the team has full visibility to your prior text conversations that have taken place with your applicants. So next, Kristen's gonna take a, a look at artificial intelligence for our next scenic stop along the way here. Awesome, thanks Lee. So automation and artificial intelligence or AI, they're often interwoven. Um, automating the mundane becomes possible when your data and your AI combine. It starts with predicting candidate patterns and then automating what happens next, including many of the topics that we're discussing today. By leveraging AI-powered predictive analytics, data science, and machine learning, you'll be working smarter as your tech draws conclusions from data and automates those tasks that make recruiting easier, allowing recruiters to do what they do best, connecting with those candidates. By automating resume search, you can use technology to automatically identify potential candidates in your existing system or externally. Through automation, you can centrally manage paid database subscriptions, ensuring usage controls for auto sourcing activities. Found candidates can also be automatically tagged, added to one or multiple um, audiences and campaigns, or have a note added to their profile. Candidate matching lets recruiters quickly and easily identify which candidates are most suited for each position based on skills match and career trajectory. Matches are made using an AI-based scoring system, which learns and improves over time. Candidate matching helps recruiters sort through a large volume of candidates by identifying those most closely aligned with the job description in comparison to other similar candidates. These AI algorithms automate what has been a manual process since recruiting began. 
users can make recruiting decisions more quickly, reduce recruiting costs, and time to fill. Next, I'm going to navigate us through the roadblocks of scheduling. So tracking down a top candidate via traditional communication methods to arrange that first or second interview simply takes too long. While one hiring team is sending back and forth emails to schedule a candidate interview, another hiring team from a competitor um, is already scheduling those interviews and possibly even making an offer. Candidate interview scheduling is a fundamental step in an organization's hiring process, yet it often remains a culprit of a lengthy time to fill. Through calendar integrations, the hiring team calendars can be synced and quickly show free and busy without the back and forth of trying to find a time that works for everyone. Taking that interview scheduling one step further, self-scheduling allows you to easily send candidates a set of proposed times um, based on that interview team's availability. The candidates can then select the days and times that work best for them. And then if that candidate's availability matches that of the interview team, smart self-scheduling will automatically schedule that interview, including automated messages to both the candidate and the interview team, um, really taking that interview process you know, fully automated with little manual effort. Smart self-scheduling increases recruiter efficiency and productivity while putting more control in the hands of the candidate. Eliminating scheduling delays accelerates the hiring process and reduces the number of candidates who drop out of the interview process while helping the talent team do more with their time. Now we're going to pass the aux cord to Lee for workflows. Thanks, Kristen. So workflow automation is another topic that is rapidly emerging. What about moving workflow state changes forward with automation so that candidates don't linger unnecessarily at any single stage in your recruitment process? How can automation assist with this? Well, workflow state changes could trigger an outside integration. That's one example. The idea here is to minimize clicks and manual interactions so that you know things like automated notifications, disposition changes, automated communication to candidates at key critical junctures in the applicant journey can take place um, rapidly and with ease. Uh, recently, I scoped a workflow automation project with one of our larger clients that does a great deal of high volume hiring. And what we did together during the scoping process was determine the stage in their process that could be automated to immediately kick off two important third party integrations simultaneously, their background check and drug screening. And in this case, two vendors were in play simultaneously. We also took into consideration a variety of conditions that needed to be factored into this automation. So for example, it was important to the client to have controls set up when triggering the automation based on company subsidiary, requisition location, and job type so that certain requisitions could be automated with this new process, those high volume positions, and others could be handled differently if necessary. So the job bite team is looking at further advances with respect to automation. So it's definitely something to stay tuned for. And so next up, what I'd like to talk about is the topic of integrations. So integrations are, think of them as, you know, another potential category of automations that could take place. So there are partner and pre-built integrations that are plug and play, and they should certainly be considered when automating whenever possible. All of the heavy lifting is completed in advance, with partner integrations and in many cases these integrations can be turned on and activated very quickly and you're ready to go if you if you require a custom integration these can be configured as well so these may be one-way integrations they may be bi-directional integrations so that a request for service is fired off to the outside vendor and the responses can also be fired back into the ats with automation so candidate assessments, background checking services, drug screening, I-9, and integration with your HRIS vendor are just some of the most common integrations we see today. Another form uh, of a strategic integration would be automating how you actually share business intelligence from your ATS or TA workflow out across your organization. So an example of this is a data exchange integration where all data points within your ATS, your onboarding, internal mobility, 
employee referral systems could be leveraged within your own BI tool, a tool like Power BI or Tableau. And what an integration like this makes possible is you can automatically blend data from your TA platform with any other system that your BI tool is also integrated with. So this means you can ask and also answer an expanded set of business questions. So consider this, your CFO may have a question like this or some other senior leader in the team. They might be asking a question like, who do we have internally that's currently underscoped? They're at an elevated flight risk. They fit within a particular pay grade and based on their performance, they would be the perfect fit for leading a team within a new business unit that we're launching. Or it could be something like this that extends across a larger number of positions where you need that sort of workforce management intelligence at your fingertips. So in the example that I just discussed, we're blending data from the ATS system, payroll or timesheet solution, flight risk information from an internal mobility profile, and performance data from a performance management solution. So this type of strategic data sharing can lead to increased collaboration across a variety of functional areas within your company. And as a result, new internal partnerships can emerge to your advantage. So next up, Kristen will take us to the land of onboarding and task management. Yeah, and so this will be our last stop today. Um, your onboarding software should be transparent, efficient, flexible, and automated. Onboarding is a central place for the company to coordinate onboarding activities where you can tailor the onboarding experience with predefined workflows based on department, position, location, and so much more. Companies can set notifications for when tasks are overdue, driving towards on-time completion, and measuring the impact of onboarding efforts such as time to onboard and then completion rate. So from the new hire experience, an onboarding checklist of orientation tasks, which includes due dates and those triggered reminders that you just set up, um, are there so that the new hire can track their progress and continue to be engaged post-offer. By automating um, regular new hire contact, including a variety of messages like workplace perks, advancement opportunities, trainings, referral programs, workplace safety, and so many other special projects, you're gonna be able to convert that great new hire into a satisfied employee. Finally, adding an automated task to take a moment and just ask for that new hire's feedback about their onboarding experience. You'll continue to keep them engaged until they've settled into their jobs. And then that'll also allow you to identify any potential concerns early on. So next, we're gonna take a look back at today's journey. So we hope you enjoyed the stops along the way and that our trip has triggered some new ideas and some new considerations for you and your team. Next up, we're gonna invite Amber back on camera to introduce our Kahoot quiz. Hey everyone, thank you so much, Kristen and Lee. This was so fun. Um, I love the TA automation road trip. So appreciate you taking us down that road and we're gonna see what the audience remembered from today's lesson. And the winner will get a job by Price pack. So if you all can join us at the link in your chat to go to kahoot.it and enter pin 271-1206. Kristen and Lee, you're allowed to participate if you want. Um, they probably do need some competition. I don't know if it's super fair that you participate, but I don't want to shun you from any fun at the same time. Right. I know Jason asked earlier in the in the summer to evolve if he could participate, but we felt like it was an unfair advantage. <laughs> I'm going to leave it up I mean, to our participants. Maybe <laughs> slightly, maybe slightly unfair. All right. We've got 13, 14 people. Could we get maybe, I don't know, four or five more people want to get in on this Jobvite prize pack? You get a Jobvite summer to evolve road trip t-shirt. There's some other fun things in there. I think you might get a bag. And other surprises, I just want to leave to mystery. 22, chocolate. right on. <laughs> Some chocolate, I think it might melt. I'm worried about that. It's, it's getting warm in a lot of places now, even though, you know, we are, we are in Toronto this week. Right, that's true. We, we did have a video of people ice skating. Um, <laughs> 
Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to the other Amber F who's playing. Great name, great last initial. Really excited to see the Amber Fs of the world representing. See if you can get us a win today. All right, 26 people love it. Let's get started. And Kristen and Lee, you can you can stay on if you want, or if you want to participate, you can do that too. All, All right, right, everyone, here we go. Question number one of four. What's the first thing Lee suggests you use as a foundation when utilizing TA automation? That's talent acquisition automation. Map out your TA process, automate resume search, build talent pipelines, or eliminate scheduling roadblocks. What's the first thing we suggest you use? This is a tough one. Let's see what our answer is. Map out your TA process. Good work, everyone. That one was hard. I'm not gonna lie. It's Mary's really in the lead here. <laughs> what? What'd you say, Lee? I said it's really hard if you if you joined in just a few minutes late. That's true. <laughs> Question number two, what percent of people making less than 50K a year in the United States are completely dependent on mobile for internet access? We've got 57%, 92, 46, or 17%. Completely dependent on mobile for internet access in the US. It's 46%, that was a tough one too. Automation is no joke, everyone. Got to know what you're looking for, which is why you're here to learn stuff today. Starling, Starling is the top of our leaderboard. We've got two more questions to take the cake team. Which one of these is one of the most common integrations seen today? Um, candidate assessment, HRIS, drug screening, or all of the above. The most common, most common integration seen today. The answer is all of the above. They are all common. We see them all the time. All right, Chauncey, you rose to the top quite a bit. Starling, Mary, and Chauncey are battling it out for our top three positions. Final question, your onboarding software should be transparent, rigid, baseless, non-automated. Transparent, rigid, baseless, or non-automated? What do we think it is? For all the marbles, the answer is transparent, of course. All right, everyone, let's see who's on our podium. In third place, we have Thomas, way to go. Second place, we have Starling, awesome job. And in first place, we have Mary. Congratulations, Mary. We're going to put my email in the chat. And if you reach out to me, I will make sure that we get that prize pack sent to you. Now there's still one, one more chance to win a prize, everyone. So if you just hang tight, I have a few more housekeeping items to cover before I send you off today. Can you see my screen, Lee? We can. Okay, great. So the word of the day today is harbor. You'll notice the British Canadian spelling of harbor with the H-A-R-B-O-U-R. -R. Um, if you visit jobvite.com forward slash word, you can enter today's word of the day for working session Wednesday. We have words of the day for all of our Summer to Evolve sessions on our virtual road trip. This enters you in a chance to win some Jobvite swag for the week. And for the whole summer, it enters you into a chance to win a $1,000 Marriott gift card. So definitely visit jobvite.com forward slash word to get Harbor entered today. This week for week three of automation, we have one more session tomorrow. So today you learned the foundation of how beautiful efficiencies and streamlining workflows are. Um, so tomorrow you can see it in practice. So we're going to have a walkthrough Thursday demo of how to increase recruiter efficiency using some of Jobbytes automation. So definitely check that out. We will put the link to register to that walkthrough Thursday in the chat. And then we hope you'll join us back here for week four on inclusive employee culture. Um, we're going to be covering how to build an inclusive employee culture, how to adapt to this new world of work that we're all in with hybrid and flexible 
um, working modalities. And then we're also going to have another walkthrough Thursday where you can find out a little more about how to reduce unconscious bias and convey your message of inclusion. And I bet there's some automation in that walkthrough Thursday mm -hmm. that you can apply from today's lesson as well. So that's all. Um, thank you once again, Lee and Kristen, for walking us through everything related to speeding up your process. You were wonderful teachers, and I hope to see everyone who's here out on the road the rest of the summer. Thank you so much. Thanks, Amber.